was born June 16, 1970 in San Diego, California. I've had a golf club in my hand uh, from before I could even remember. My dad would hit balls in our backyard when I was crawling. I couldn't even walk and he would keep an eye on me. When I was 18 months old, he gave me a cut down club. Originally it was a right-handed club, but I had mirror imaged him when I was in front of him and when he gave me that club, I would hit it left-handed. I'm right-handed in everything else I do, yet I play golf left-handed. I certainly have traits from both my parents. The trait from my father that I, I carry is a trait of determination. My dad was a, a very interesting person in that he was successful at everything he did, but it was with hard work. He became an, an elite fighter pilot. He was a, a very skilled skier, very good athlete in other sports, captain of his basketball team. He did everything and worked hard at it until he was proficient, if not the best. Sometimes those things that you have to work a little bit harder for, take a little more time, sometimes they're, they, they're, they're worth it. As a teenager, I started to develop appreciation for what the Open Championship meant to the game of golf. And then it wasn't until I was in high school and I remember watching Seve get really excited that I started having dreams of winning the Open Championship. He was just exciting to watch. He always had that go for broke attitude. Seve's approach is exactly what I loved about Seve. I loved the recovery shot, and nobody had more of them, and nobody pulled them off more than Seve. Three rules. Yes, one, two right. clubs. Okay. Back as far as I want, right. or go back to the team. Yeah, that's fine. Which way do you think I should go? <laughs> <laughs> sure. He was able to to do things with a golf ball from uh, from all areas that were just exceptional. Yeah. Winning will come the, the harder you work, but also you can't win without taking risks. You have to hit the shots to win and not rely on somebody else to miss them. I had a great first experience of the Open Championship. In 91, I ended up uh, playing not a great first round and came back with a 67 to make the cut. Phil Mickelson, the genius amateur from the United States, and playing very well today, one under today. I remember hitting balls on the range, and the wind was straight in on the range, and I was trying to keep the ball down and hitting these low shots, but they were spinning too much. They were floating in the air, even though they were only 12 feet off the ground, and then watching Seve do it. And Seve was able to take the spin off the golf ball, get it on the ground, and get it, get it running. And it took me a while to understand how to do that. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would to learn how to do that. Tries to hold against the wind, will it work? I don't think it's worked, no, it's gone with the breeze. My record in the Open Championship from 91 to 2011 was nothing to be proud of. He hasn't given it enough to get there. Cool, blimey, I'm not. <laughs> See ya. Some people would be discouraged and almost not want to go play after the, not having a lot of success, but I, I actually found it to be the other way around. I found it to be a great challenge. Oops, not so easy, is it? It was uh, a, a great learning experience. Doesn't sound as though he likes it. like Lynx Golf or are you trying to talk yourself into liking Lynx Golf? I actually really enjoy it. Oh, but he does uh, at times unwind the sagas of Phil. Every time the Open would come around, I would see it as another great opportunity to work on, improve, and hopefully refine my, my Lynx Golf skills. This for a five and it's a six, so that's goodbye, Phil. Two thousand four is when my preparation for the Open Championship really 
became detailed. It was the first year that I felt I really could win the Open Championship. Absolutely perfect. We had worked on a, a particular shot that would take spin off of the golf ball. That's an impressive shot. It's like a little punch shot with a three wood. And by shortening the backswing instead of changing ball position, I was able to make the same golf swings and hit the ball lower without, without spin. We have a wide range of shots this year. And Dave Pels is the one that really showed me how to prepare properly, how to make the major championship venue your home course to where you knew where the balls were going to go, you knew what the putts were going to do. There were no surprises. Lucas plays a low chip and run into the wind. And that's when I started to give myself chances. Sheer. But even though you know the right shots to hit, you still have to execute, you still have to pull them off, and you still have to make putts and win. Phil Mickelson ties for the lead as well, eight under par. And putting and win, I think is the greatest challenge that I've had to overcome. Open Championship Lynx Golf is extremely grueling and it beats you up and it's very mentally draining. We'll start at 6.57 in the morning, the first tee time, and the last won't be till 3.30, and you'll get such a variance in weather. You won't have a chance to win if you get on the wrong end of the tee time. The golf course changes so dramatically with the weather conditions that to be able to be aggressive, to play aggressive, to make birdies, you have to have uh, weather that, that reciprocates. If you have uh, a bad draw and everybody else is playing in nice weather. Come on! You just simply don't have a chance. Oh, no. I've been on both ends of that. Way right. You know, I've been on the bad end, I've been on the good end, and you, you need a little bit of luck if you are going to be able to compete and contend and win an Open Championship. Oh, so it's looking pretty nasty out there. You are tested in all areas of your game. It's a wonderful, complete test for a player if they're able to win that championship. The Open in 2011 at Royal St. George's was a, a turning point for me again. That front nine on Sunday was almost magical. I hit, I hit every shot about as perfect as I could in, in horrific weather. And, and made the putts. And really propelled myself right up the leaderboard to the point where I thought I was gonna win. If he gets it going early, who knows what may happen. Number four was really a tough hole. It was a converted par five into a par four. Wind was straight in, and I knew that it was gonna be one of the toughest pars. It, it was the hardest golf hole on the course, I felt. My second shot was just this low bullet that really never got more than six or seven feet off the ground and ran back there to about 20 feet. That was impressive. Long, low, raking, long iron. Beautifully played. Mickelson showing he's got all the shots. But even, at, even after hitting such a great shot, I, I didn't have really a putt that was, uh, was an easy putt to make, but I ended up making that. Mickelson for a birdie. He's done it, you know. That's where I felt like this front nine could really be special because I picked up two shots on the field on that hole. Mickelson, birdie putt at six. I had just birdied six to get to 300, and I, I hit two good shots on seven. Had about 40 feet for eagle and was just really trying to two putt it, and the ball went in. Another one, another one drops for Mickelson. Now I'm five under through seven holes on a very difficult course of final round of the Open. And, uh, just playing great. In fact, on eight and nine, I gave myself two great chances from about 12 feet as well. He's on fire. And those putts didn't go in, but I still felt like I was in control and this was going to be uh, a really a great championship for me. I, I was having a blast. I was having a blast because I was playing great, hitting the shots, and the weather was so brutal and everybody in contention was having to deal with it. All the players that had a shot to win were playing in this difficult condition, and 
and I was playing some of my best golf. It was about as much fun as I've had. Oh, another birdie for Phil Mickelson. What a round of golf he's putting together. I loved having that momentum, having that feel, but every time you get it going, you just never know if it's going to leave you. But it wasn't until the par three that I missed a short putt where it kind of threw me. Oh, my goodness. Just a careless moment. I, I wasn't focused on it, and it, uh, it threw my concentration the rest of the round. No. That's three putts now he's missed. It kind of shook me, and I, I had a hard time getting it back. And it's all gone now for Phil. And I ended up losing by a couple of strokes. Darren and I have uh, developed, I think, a very special relationship over the years. We became good friends. He had a, a very difficult situation with his wife, Heather, and, and when my wife got diagnosed with breast cancer as well, he was a, one of the first people I called uh, to talk to and gave me some great advice throughout the process and was very supportive. Right now, as I'm speaking about it, I'm getting chills thinking about him and how happy I was that he, that he won that Open Championship. Uh, that he experienced what it felt like to win a major, and especially uh, the Open, the one that I know meant so much to his heart. I might have felt uh, a little more discouraged if I felt like that was my last great opportunity to win the Open, and I didn't feel that way, in fact. I think the Open Championship, because it's much more of a precision game and that it's impossible to overpower Lynx Golf, the penalty is too great, that I feel like as you get older in your career, you have more and more chances. It didn't bother me that other people doubted that I would win the Open Championship. It made perfect sense. I, I didn't grow up on Lynx Golf and I've uh, not had a great record. But I could see it starting to turn. I could see the opportunity in 04, the close call in 2011. I could see my, my play in the Open Championship get better and better. And knew that as I got older, this, this tournament was going to continue to provide opportunities to win. The Open Championship in 2013 at Muirfield was a spectacular championship. It was wonderful conditions because the golf course was firm and fast with a lot of wind, but really not much rain. And we were able to, to be challenged by the wind, by the golf course itself, and, and have it be a fair test of golf. I had played well the week before. I had won the Scottish Open. I had a lot of confidence that I had the game. and and I was playing well at the time to win the Open Championship. That was a beautifully controlled shot. I kept trying to find a way to outsmart or outplay Muirfield, and I just gave up on that and decided to not try to overpower the golf course, which meant a lot of four, five, and six irons off the tee, and then hit quality iron shots into the greens. Fine round so far. And Mark actually looking comfortable on the links. He looks very comfortable, isn't he? That decision almost took pressure off me because it was so much easier hitting those fairways with a four or five iron than it was a driver. The greens that year were some of the fastest we had played on in years. The Masters and the US Open were known for having fast greens. Lynx golf really isn't. And we had some of the quickest greens we've ever seen. Oh, oh. Some shorter drives. I didn't feel like it gave me an advantage or a disadvantage. I felt everybody had to play it, and you had to play it a little bit more strategic. The turning point for me was, I believe, on Friday when I was not playing well, and I came to 15 and hit it 30 feet right in the middle of the green and had a putt that you couldn't keep almost on the green. And sure enough, it, it, as easy as I hit it, it still rolled to where I could read Callaway go end over end, but it still went 18 feet past the hole.
making that comeback for par was a, was a big moment for me. I felt like I was saying that I was gonna handle whatever conditions were thrown at me, no matter how difficult or challenging or, or fair or unfair, I felt like I was gonna be ready for it. I'm excited. I'm playing great. I'm putting phenomenal. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next two days. What I did really well was mentally not worry too much about what other guys were doing because I knew at the end of the day, the winning score was gonna be around even par. The course was just too testing. There would be a few guys that might be able to shoot under par, but the field wasn't going to be able to, and those few that did shoot under par eventually would come back, and so I focused more on keeping my score around level. There was a critical point in that final round on the back nine on the 13th hole where I hit one of the, my, my best quality five irons to about 12 feet behind the hole. It was the best shot I had hit. It was this beautiful penetrating five iron into a, a severe win and it was a very difficult green to hit. It's one of my best shots of the week and you need to capitalize on, on that shot and make that putt. There were not going to be a lot of birdie opportunities. I was one over par and I knew even was going to be about the winning score, I thought, so I had to make this putt. And when that putt went in, that's when I felt like I've got a chance, like this is my real opportunity now. Nicholson for a birdie at the difficult 14th. Looks good. as I was playing, every shot was critical. Nicholson with this awkward length. You had to focus on every single stroke because of the difficulty of the, of the golf course, and you didn't want it to, to shake it. The one on 16 was big because I hit a perfect golf shot, exactly how I wanted it flighted, landed it exactly where I wanted to, and somehow the ball rolled back down off the green uh, into a very tough spot to, to get up and down. Oh, that's cruel, though, isn't it? That is very cruel. Getting even more cruel. I was very upset after that, but I kind of turned my attitude around and knew that everybody else was going to have to play this and that my short game is as good or better than anybody else's. And if I can get this one up and down, Everybody else is going to struggle with this hole. I had to make sure I got it up the slope, and I hit it a touch too firm to go about six, seven feet by the hole. That putt, that was a big putt. Nicholson finds another precious, precious par. shot from Mickelson on the 17th. Knowing that those bunkers on the left could be catastrophic, I still had to take them on. And I got lucky in that there were a lot of little rolls in that fairway. And I had a, a, a slight uphill lie that allowed me to shut the face a little bit and turn a draw into the wind. I was thinking if I could make a birdie that I would control the championship. The rough left and short of 17 green was the worst rough on the golf course. And then there was that bunker over to the right that I had hit in in a practice round and had no chance to go at the green. I had to go backwards, knowing that the penalty for a miss on the, the second three would, was going to be devastating. I didn't have a bailout. I had to hit this shot perfectly. If you want to win tournaments, you have to take risk. Come on. And the people that aren't willing to take those risks are missing out. Look at this. Look at this. Are missing out on the excitement of the game. Look at this. And uh, missing out on controlling their own destiny. Those are two mighty blows.
I knew if I make par in the last hole that I would win the tournament, and I needed to get the ball in the fairway. And if I could get the ball in the fairway, that was going to be half the battle to make it par. Watch his reaction. He's got it down the middle. I hit a hybrid right up the left side, and it was just a, a good solid shot into that left right wind. This is the moment. One good straight leading. I really hit a good six iron there, right at the left edge of the green where I wanted it, with this strong left to right wind, and I did not factor in the bleachers blocking the wind. And the ball never turned. The wind never really touched it. Never quite moved to the right like I was expecting the wind to move it. But it was as solid a six iron as I could have hit. And I did get a good bounce to, to, to run down the green and be 18 feet from home. What a lovely bounce, Ken. What a delicious bounce. <laughs> Maybe it was meant to be. It's just the best feeling. Walking up with the Grand Sands lined on both sides, knowing you have the Open Championship won, that was a great feeling. And being able to really kind of enjoy the moment. Certainly, the Grand Stands and the people make that a special walk, if not the best walk in golf. On that last putt, I had played the absolute maximum break I could and tried to die it just over the front lip. And that's exactly what happened. The ball just barely crept over the front lip and went in for a birdie. I, I just said to Bones, I did it. You know, uh, you know, half. <laughs> Excitement, half disbelief, uh, and the other half, I don't know. Well, it was great to see my dad, my mom, and my, my family. Having my family there was very special to be able to share it. But what made it the most special thing to me was they were at an age where and they kind of looked at me like I was cool. I hadn't seen that look very often. You did awesome. It's the best I have. That was fun. <laughs> Your best is pretty good. And my dad especially knew how hard it was for me to overcome and win this championship, and I think that he appreciated it. This is such an accomplishment for me because I just never knew if I would be able to develop the game and the shots needed, required to play Lynx golf effectively and to uh, play the best round of arguably my career today. To shoot the round of my, my life here, it just feels amazing to win this Claire Jug. The greatest challenge that I faced in my career was developing the skills to win in Lynx golf and to, to win the Open Championship. Because I had to overcome so much more to get there and learn and be patient and develop the skills needed to win on Lynx golf. And it uh, took a couple of decades, but I finally did it. Well, I regret having not won it more than just this once. It, it's given me so much pleasure and satisfaction uh, being able to be an Open champion. But um, I feel like this tournament is going to continue to provide opportunities to win. Majestic. And he's got it. Yes. Magnificent Phil Mickelson. But Phil Mickelson rolls in another one. 46 years old, looking to become the second oldest winner ever of the Open. Oh, talk about laying down a marker. Astonishing. Absolutely astonishing.